So this is a video about building your own patterns, playing them with patches that you've built as well, and it not getting confused. Sometimes when you uh, create your own, well, most of the time, when you create your own patterns and put them with your own patches, the patterns end up playing the sounds of the patches when you don't want them to. So this is a way of doing it. This is actually two ways of doing it. There's one easy way, um, which is using a MIDI keyboard, and there's a slightly harder way, which just uses the pads, but apart from that, it's absolutely identical. Um, so hopefully this will explain how to do it in a nice, easy way. I realized that when Yamaha built all the patches in this, they were only using, say, a few MIDI notes. Um, there's all these other MIDI notes that we can use for the, for the patterns. So it made sense just to try and uh, utilize both at the same time. So that's what I've tried to do here. So when I play these pads, I'm only maybe using these. We've got all these which we can access and use for our patterns as well. Right, so firstly, what we've got to do is we've got to decide which kit we want to use. So I'm going to go back down uh, here and I'm going to find the Oak Custom Kit and I'm going to save it to 38 because I know that is empty at the moment. So I'm going to hit Store, uh, User Kit 38, Enter, Done. So now I've got the kit by itself. Easy, no problem. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to find an empty pattern. So I'm going to use pattern number 25, um, and I'm going to save that pattern 25 to the pad that I want to trigger the, the loop from. So I'm going to go into um, voice, I'm going to hit that pad there, and I'm going to make it uh, pattern 25. Use a pattern 25, go up here, use a pattern 25, whoops, there we go, empty pattern, store, store. Okay, done. Right, now I'm going to go back into the user pattern and I'm going to go back down to MIDI. Transmit all to on. I'm going to come down here and looking at page 13 of the manual, um, uh, on the right hand side of the page, you can see the different voice sets there are, the ones with, which will start with four. So it tells you what um, kit they've been used for in the past. So that's just different voice sets. For that, you need to set it to, uh, you need the MSB to be 63, you need the LSB to be zero, and you need the PC to be the patch, which is, I believe is 82 for the one I want to use. So I'm gonna store that, pattern stored. Right, just go back to the kit, yeah, still on 38, so go into the pattern. Now, I've connected my MIDI keyboard just via MIDI. Make sure your MIDI is on and you're not using USB because otherwise it won't work. So if I play the MIDI keyboard now, I've assigned it to MIDI channel 10. Easy, all the voices are there, all the sounds for that set. So I'm going to go and drop into record. So I'm gonna go shift, pattern. I'm gonna do two bars, not four, um, semi-quavers and a loop and um, there we go, there's the voices I want to use, so I'm just going to do it like this. Hit play. Right, so I hit stop, and then it'll ask me which patch I want to assign the loop to. So I want to assign it to that one. Hit enter. So now, because it's already assigned, I've already assigned that patch to it, but I'm just going to reassigning the notes to those pads. So now if I go back to the kit on Oak Custom 38, got the symbols and everything else, but I've also now got Easy. So that's one way of doing it. Now we're going to talk about a different way. So this is the other way of doing it if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. I've set up another patch with Oak Custom on. And I've set up another pattern onto um, the uh, pad six. 
which is empty at the moment. There's nothing on it. I'm, um, I'm going to go into that pattern. I'm going to assign another um, MIDI uh, voice set. So I'm going to transmit all along here. Uh, let's go to 63 again. So this is exactly as I did in the last bit of the video. Um, 63, go along here, 82, 81, 82. Let's go for 82. I can't remember what it was. Um, so uh, I'm going to store that. I'm going to store that to that pattern. So I've assigned the voices to the pattern. I've stored the pattern onto that pad, which is part of the whole patch. OK, but what I'm going to do now is if I go into MIDI and I um, and I come along here and I find the actual MIDI notes, I can still play all the other notes which I was playing on the keyboard off the pads just by changing the MIDI, the MIDI notes of the um, of the pads which I'm hitting. So if I want to find a, a cowbell sound or something like this, there we go. Those are our two notes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift and record. And I'm just going to do two bars again. Uh, I'm going to hit start. Easy. I'm going to sign that to pad. That's the one we just got. This is the one we just done. Yes, that's done. Come back to the kit. I'm not going to save the kit though because um, otherwise I'll have, trained, I'll have stored the new voices and I don't, want that, no, I don't want that to happen. But if I go down here, I've got the loop I just recorded and I've still got drums. Right, if you want to do this with tune voices, you just do it on the other MIDI channels. So if you do it on MIDI channel one, you assign the voice for the glockenspiel, you use your um, you use your MIDI keyboard just to play in the notes into the sequencer in exactly the same way. It works with every single instrument, whether it is tuned instruments, untuned instruments, um, the works. Hopefully this makes sense. I really hope it does. Um, but it works and it's once you get your head around it, it's really, really quick and easy. So there we go. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if you've got any questions. Get back to me.